but now it's like every single seat is filled. I'm so excited. Thank you guys so much for coming out. I'm Jen Candy. For those of you who don't know me, um, my father was the late, great John Candy, who is no stranger to Second City. Um, so I created this uh, show, Couch Candy, to kind of have a glimpse into my life and also to bring on some amazing, talented alumni from Second City and SCTV and kind of have you guys be a fly on the wall of our conversation that we have. So this show is going to be every other Wednesday night at 8 o'clock. Come more than once. I'd love to see you guys. And let's get this show started. I've got a clip that I'm going to show in a moment. My guest tonight is the very talented Dave Thomas. Now, <laughs> you might remember Dave from as Doug McKenzie from Bob and Doug, The Great White North. <laughs> or from my favorite movie, Follow That Bird, where he plays kind of a uh, smarmy character. <laughs> and for those, he did voiceovers for Brother Bear and other Coneheads, which I watched earlier before I came in today, which is <laughs> a fabulous movie. So let's 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 roll this clip and kind of uh, it's one of my favorites. If you think that no ride could make you throw up, then get on down here to the Devil's Towering Tenji Upside Down Inferno at Funland in Maryvale. You start with a 90 degree climb up the famous 500 foot Devil's Tower and then plunge into an inverted 110 degree descent at nearly 300 miles an hour, producing a force of 10 Gs upon your body, more than astronauts endure during a space launch. Then you'll tear through the famous burning quarter mile loop at nearly 400 miles an hour. Too fast to catch on fire, but not too fast to feel the heat. Then get set to hang on to the safety bar because you'll travel upside down for nearly a half a mile before descending through a series of small loops, reaching your top speed of nearly 500 miles an hour at the famous sudden stop conclusion of our ride. Excuse me, sir, how did you enjoy the ride? Oh, it was thrilling. How about you? I loved it. It's a bug-eyed whirlwind of screaming terror. It's coronary alley on 50 screeching wheels. It's the devil's towering 10G upside down inferno. Five miles off Route 7 and Funland in Maryvale. Everyone, let's give a hand for Dave Thomas. It's like being in your car. I know, right? <laughs> where Drive. Are we? Drive. Okay. Drive me somewhere. Where again. Go? Right. Where shall we go? Oh, we need to go to Target. Wherever okay. you like. There we go. Perfect. How are you? I'm good. Good. Good to see you. Thank you for having me here. I don't remember doing that. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was listening to it backstage and I went. Which one did I? I have I no memory of that at all. <laughs> <laughs> Sad. That was a good one. It's a funny one, though. Yeah, we did so many sketches that a lot of them just blur together. They all blur together. Things. Okay. Yeah. Well, there, there we go. So, hi. Hi. Okay. <laughs> let's let's talk about you. Okay. Okay. So you're Canadian, like me. I am. You are. Born in Canada, proud flag waving Canadian. Saint Catharines. Yeah. Yeah. Right near the border. I was kind of like I found out ninety percent of all people in Canada live within 100 miles of the U.S. border. <laughs> <laughs> I think that tells you something. It's <laughs> <laughs> like 300 million square miles north of that, there just is nobody there. <laughs> horse flies this big, and that's about it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you, start, you started in an advertising firm? No, I didn't no? actually. No? Was it? Uh, I, was I got it wrong. There we go. So no, no. Was it, it's easy advertising to copywriter? Computer. I was a copywriter for Ken Erickson, but that was only after Godspell closed and I couldn't get an acting job. Oh, so, so Godspell was before? Godspell was before Got advertising. Okay. And I didn't want to be like a waiter who said he was an actor, so I quit acting and <laughs> wrote up a bunch of fake ads and got a job at McCann Erickson. I worked there for a couple of years. And you became the head writer for Coca-Cola account? Really by default, because <laughs> <laughs> what happens is that there was two, there were two writers for all of Coca-Cola Canada. There was the head writer, a w woman named Gretchen, I can't remember her last name, and then there was me, and her job was to do the classier stuff, and my job was to do all the shitty retail stuff. <laughs> basically just print ads where you try to make your bottle look bigger than bottles of Pepsi. 
And then I got lucky. I did a, a contest commercial that no one else wanted to do. And I thought of a, I, I made it funny, and then I came up with the idea of casting Tim Conway in it. <laughs> and next thing I know, I'm down here shooting a Coca-Cola commercial with Tim Conway. And it went well. So they fired Gretchen and made me head writer. <laughs> 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 so that's how I became head writer. So in all fairness, you know, it wasn't really that great. And then what led you into Second City? What led me into Second City was that they started it, and I missed the first round um, because they really had that cast. Be they, they auditioned, but it was, uh, I, I wasn't even, I was in New York at the time doing something for Coke, and I wasn't even there for the auditions, but they put together a great cast. It was Dan Aykroyd, Valerie Bromfield, um, uh, Joe Flaherty, Brian Doimler, Gilda Radner, and I think Jerry Salzberg and Jane Eastwood. Right. And then uh, your dad was in, they, they liked him, but they, put, they didn't put him in the Toronto show, they put him in the Chicago show. Right. So he went to Chicago while they opened that. But they couldn't get a liquor license, so they closed that. <laughs> <show. laughs> it ran for about six months. It was a horrible little theater, just sweaty and hot in the summers. And Toronto summers are humid, you know, and horrible. Oh, they are. And, uh, and their winters are freezing and cold, which is why most Canadians get the hell out of there. And move to L.A. Yeah. Or Florida. <laughs> yeah. So uh, then they had a second round of additions, and I missed that. But then three people left, and I auditioned and got in. Oh, that, there you go. And then I was ended up working with your dad. There, perfect. Yeah. How was and that? And we had just the best time together. <laughs> he would. You remind me so much of him. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Look I at this know. face. <laughs> Behind my dad in drag. <laughs> <laughs> She's not, because her, her dad in yeah. drag would wear a babushka and boots. <laughs> And a horrible skirt. He would go for the comedy drag, not the kids in the hall. I want to look good drag. <laughs> so, but anyway, so we did stuff together. And one of the great things about going on stage with John was the audience loved him so much that when you enter, half the work is done. All you got to do after that is not fuck it up. So you know, <laughs> he, he, they liked him instinctively. So I did a lot of two-person stuff with him, and we did improvs and games and things like that. And your dad had a thing that I used to call his room. And in John's room, everything was always in the same place. And we had regulars that would come back for the improvs every night. And so they would wait for these sketches because uh, above the filing cabinets up there, John would have his blow dart. And they knew that it was up there. And when John would walk over there and reach up for it and then go like this, <laughs> <laughs> you had to go with the reality of getting tagged with this one of his slogans. <laughs> <laughs> and he would play games with me, like he'd go to his library in the room and take a book off, and he would go, I got this book, and I want you to read this passage because it's very important. And he would hand me the book, and he would go, it's in Latin. <laughs> <laughs> and he'd just turn to the audience and wait, and the audience would laugh, and you'd have to play along with it, and then I had to do Latin, because you can't deny it. You've got to go with it, you know? So it was hilarious. Just John's room was a panic and a lot of fun. Oh my gosh. So what was probably one of the best sketches that you liked doing on stage? Or characters? Well, um, With or without my dad? We did a, 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 we did a, a, a commercial parody on stage where your dad played Daryl Sittler. Daryl oh, okay. Sittler, he, his teeth knocked out in ho playing hockey, the Toronto Maple Leaf hockey player. And, and he <laughs> talked like this, so your dad did him like this. You, 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 you had no teeth. But he had such a, he had a, this sweet face, but with no teeth, and the you audience loved it. <laughs> <laughs> so there's like Joe Flaherty playing another hockey player, I forget who he was, and your dad was Daryl Sittler, and I was the director, trying to get them to do this spot, and he kept screwing up. We had a hell of a lot of fun with that sketch, you know? Um, okay, here's a, one night, th this is the, th it was a small theater, it was a room, the audience part of it was bigger than this, because Andrew Alexander was trying to get money, and <laughs> so, but the theater was kind of round, the stage was kind of round, and uh, one night, John and I came out and decided we're going to do a scene totally in gibberish and try to sell it, <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> and so, 
The audiences in Toronto were way different than the audiences in Chicago. They were hard drinking business people and they would come there and just back them back and get really <laughs> drunk. And after a while they were like yelling at you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so John and I are doing this gibberish thing and then all of a sudden somebody throws a highball class and it literally shatters at, at like shoulder height between the two of us on the back wall and we have to like uh, dodge the flying glass. And I, I got pissed. And I went, that's it. And I walked off the stage, figuring John would follow me. But John didn't. He stayed out there in the scene. And as I was walking off stage, we had these Toronto cop costumes. And Tron <laughs> Toronto cop costumes are really easy to do in winter because it's just a parka and then that hat with the red bands. <laughs> <laughs> and any pants would do underneath. So I grabbed the parka and the hat, and I was out into the house like real fast. And I just screamed, who threw that glass? <laughs> and the audience turned into like compliant civilians. <laughs> <laughs> and they point at this woman and I just went, you, out! And John told me afterwards, he said, geez, I couldn't believe how fast the cops got there. <laughs> <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't even know I wasn't a real cop. But, but he bounced off stage and meanwhile this girl is walking sheepishly towards me and I'm a cop, but I'm not a cop. I'm the cast. I'm not, I don't know what to do with her. And she gets close to me, and by the time she actually gets to me, John is there. And John sees me, now he's got her. And he grabs the girl by the scruff of the neck, and he goes, you're barred from the theater. He starts walking her through the back, to the backstage area, past the bar, and, and there was a little narrow hallway behind the backstage and a door that led into the alley. You're barred from this theater. You're never allowed to come here again. What you did out there was very wrong. Opens the door, throws her out the door, and closes it. <laughs> and it was a really bizarre evening of comedy where it started on the stage, it went into the audience, and it ended in the alley. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what this Toronto company was like. It was just crazy like that all the time. There was no hold for yeah, us. It just really do, you, that's, oh my God. And you were saying something earlier about my dad's strength. Okay. He was, <laughs> so like, John was insanely strong. And one night, I still have this. I have a few memories, but one was he picked up Dan Aykroyd like this, and Dan's a big guy, and he picked me up like this. We're horizontal, and he spun us around the room, and to this day, I can remember seeing Danny's face, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> going around the room sideways like that. I would do stuff with your Dan on stage where I would run at him from the other side of the stage, and just jump into the air and tuck my legs, and he'd catch me like a ball, and he'd barely rock on his heels. <laughs> <laughs> the physical stuff that you could do with somebody that's that strong was really hilarious, you know? And he used to play, we'd do things where he would, be, and then we'd reverse it, and then I'd go, okay, I've had enough of you, and I'd just take two fingers like this and pick him up, and John would go up really high on his toes against the back wall, and it would look like I was lifting him up the other <laughs> It was just real funny physical stuff like that. So when did you start SCTV, where you were original yeah. cast, when John, did you start writing, uh, or always? No, yeah, I was always more, really I think I was hired more as a writer than as an actor. Right. I was the least experienced of all the actors that were hired. But um, we, we were talking about this before, this is the legendary conflict between John and Andrew because they, they hired some of us as writer performers and some of us as performers, but they didn't tell us who was who. That's <laughs> <laughs> so cheesy, but you know, I remember like one of the first or second check that I got, we're just sitting around the office and get our checks, and John said to me, what do you got? And I, I went, I threw it to him to look. I said, there, take a look. And he opened it, and it was more than he got. He was like, what the? <laughs> <laughs> he was really pissed, and he never forgave Andrew for that. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think just, eventually they did. What? Eventually he did at some I point, he, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes. But but what he did in his in his sort of <laughs> <laughs> what am I missing here? No, I just no. That's I can't it. see you. This I know. Is, I'm in your car. <laughs> we're in a car. Just pretend like we're driving and okay. having a conversation. Anyway. <laughs> Going, Jim. I don't know. I okay. think uh, I think we're. I want to go to Canada. Okay. Yeah. Lake Arrowhead. Lake. Oh. Okay. Funny story. Did about you? That. Did you? You went on trips with us to Lake Arrowhead, right? Of course. Yes. And I remember the Christmas Eve. Your dad called me. 
<laughs> to ask me if I would go up with him because he had put all the presents up there mm -hmm. and all the kids were sick. <laughs> so we had to go up Christmas Eve to Lake Arrowhead and, get get and bring it all back down. <laughs> 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 and I said, I can't, John, I can't do that. I pack, I pack wrapping stuff for my kids. I'll forget. And I found out later I wasn't the first guy he called. <laughs> <laughs> dad got the house in uh, Lake Arrowhead because it was too far to go to Toronto for the winters and, and Christmas the and he loved the snow so we always want so we bought it just for the snow yeah. and we maybe went twice <laughs> <laughs> it was well, the drive that drive is ridiculous that drive is ridiculous yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. too windy yeah and then you're driving a white out yeah you feel like you're gonna go off the cliff but that story of John having to go get those that was a typical John moment mm -hmm. he would always have these great plans and then <laughs> Something would happen, <laughs> and then he had to go and do something that was just horrible and and just unthinkable. And that drive like that on Christmas Eve is terrible. I don't think I knew that one. Maybe like the you didn't know that. No, I don't think I knew that one. Your mom knows it. My mom. Did you know that one? Yeah. You didn't. <laughs> but Santa still came. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh, that's hysterical. Yeah. Um, gosh, I've got some other. I've got other questions. I know. I have a. You guys got to write some fun little questions. Let's see, because we're talking about snow. Okay. And I have a theme with all of these questions. Are these audience questions? These are audience. You? These are audience questions. Look how long they were to I. <laughs> you know who you are. Jesus. <laughs> needs an editor. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you should do for hire. <laughs> editor for hire. No, I have I have my little notes, and then I've got. But I want to read these because we were talking about that. All right. Okay. My friends and I grew up in Texas. We're fans of all things Canadian. Our favorite band was Rush. Our favorite show was SETV. So when Bob and Doug and Getty got together, our heads exploded. <laughs> who approached who on the song, and how did that come about? Or a boat? <laughs> well, the reason we even did a song was because Rick was a DJ, and Rick understood the recording industry, and I didn't. And he said, we have to have two songs. And I said, why? He said, because we won't get airplay if you don't have songs. If you don't get airplay, the album's going to go nowhere. So we weren't songwriters or singers, <laughs> really. I mean, we could impersonate singers, but we weren't really singers. And Rick knew Getty from high school. So <laughs> we wrote a, We got two guys to write a song, Mark Giacomelli and Terry, Terry Goldsmith, Goldsmith and Crawford. Might have been three guys to write the song. <laughs> <laughs> it took three people to write a song, and neither of them were Rick and I. And we did the improv crap in the middle to kind of a rhythm track, and Getty sang the song. And we literally paid Getty a two four case of beer. <laughs> <laughs> and we sold over a million records, and I don't think we ever gave him any more. <laughs> That's a good deal on your side. Yeah. There we go. Okay, here's it's a, it's almost like a two-parter. Oh, is it? And no, not from Texas, mm -hmm. but another thing. Okay, is it true that the Great White North was conceived as SET's res, SETV's response to CBC's demand for a certain amount of purely Canadian content in its programming? If yes. so, bravo. Yes. He says bravo. So I would tell the whole right. story, but I don't want to waste this valuable candy time with that <laughs> story. You can find it anywhere on the internet and look it up if you want. But in other words, it is yes. Yes. The answer is yes. There we go. We have yes. What other stuff can we talk what about? What can we talk about? We can talk about... I can tell some more stories. Yeah, I want more stories. <laughs> you told us, okay, so we already know that I'm, I'm already imagining you running and jumping and my dad catching you. Yeah. So that's all stage stuff. Now let's let's shift over to SCTV. Yeah, okay. Um, and then we can go into your show. The, uh, there's the Elvis Presley band <gasps> we were talking about. Yeah. John played uh, Latter-day Elvis Presley when he was <laughs> overweight wearing capes. <laughs> and then he went from the full capes to like little half capes, <laughs> mini capes. And Harold wrote this sketch for John. Harold was always writing, you know, fat jokes for John, and John didn't like that. And so John reluctantly played this Elvis thing. And the joke is a pretty cheesy joke too. The joke was just he crashes through the stage. So we had a fake stage built, 
and John cracks through the stage. Well, John didn't want that really to go on, and that day that we did that sketch, Elvis died. <laughs> so we shot it, we shot it, but it never went on. And I know there was like conflict, you know, with Where's with John. That that, you know, really sad about Elvis, but on the other hand, don't have to do that. Really? <laughs> don't have to do that sketch. We caught John and I caught Harold Ramis. We did a Ben Hur parody where your dad played Curly. Yes. In three stooges as Judah Ben Hur. <laughs> <laughs> it's taking a little bit of license with that great story, but I, I thought it was a great turn. And we caught Harold Ramis. Uh, here's, the, here's the background of the joke. The oarsmen in the boat had to wear loincloths. And, we, <laughs> and everyone in the cast and a bunch of extras had to play oarsmen. And because they're just wearing loincloths, it was kind of revealing. So there were these little tan bikini underwears that, were, that everyone wore. And then after we finished the sketch, everyone just took off their bikini underwears in the dressing room and threw them on the floor. After the show, your dad and I went into the dressing room and caught Harold Ramis collecting all the bikini underwears <laughs> and putting them in a bag. We said, Harold, what the hell are you doing? He said, well, well I don't want them to go to waste. <laughs> Jokes like that where, <coughs> honestly, your dad laughed so hard, he was crying and couldn't stop laughing. And whenever we brought that up again, he would just laugh his head off. What was my favorite character that your, uh, my dad did, that you, that you did, that my dad loved? Wendy Tang, <laughs> which I'd be killed for today. It's like he's playing an Asian guy, and a Chinese guy. He's the most racist thing. But, <laughs> <laughs> but back then... It was part, it was okay. Peter Sellers did Indian guys and, you know, Tony Randall did an Asian guy and it was just sort of like what you did, you know? You did, <laughs> as part of your repertoire, you did ethnic characters and so I did this character but I never really got the look right because I, I don't even remotely look Asian and so, <laughs> you know, I had, I, the makeup people did things with my eyes and that just hurt and never worked and Joe Flaherty had a, a line they used, the many faces of Lin Yi Tang, which <laughs> described the, the right. that. But your dad, uh, I did a running series, a running sketch called Doorway to Hell, where Lin was the host of this sketch. Right. And your dad did a couple of those with me, and he loved the character. He did, I did it on stage initially, and that's where he started liking it. But well, anyway, go. that was his favorite character that I did. Um, his characters, he had a different Yeah, what was your favorite char what was your fa favorite character that he did? He did a thing in on the stage show where he played a guy who was an insane taxidermist. <laughs> <laughs> and he brings a girl home on a date and it's just you know, he's gonna stuff her. <laughs> <laughs> it was very bizarre and very dark. But he played it. You know, John's gentle characters were the funniest characters I thought. You know, Dr. Tongue, just a character, just a gentle, a big gentle guy like that with a dark side, you know. <laughs> and, and he played these characters that were big and gentle but had a dark side. And they were dangerous, you know. And, and that's what made them fun. But that, that, that <laughs> taxidermist character was one of my favorites by far. Oh my God. Okay. Now, as we're telling these, I want to play the slideshow because I've got a slideshow. Sure. And. We could play a little game of essentially spew out as much information about the photo that okay. you remember because I had a couple of those photos in there that it would, I'm now going, oh, I should have probably had the photo up while you're talking about it. But so Okay, that's okay. Fantasy Island, and that's John and Bogart there, but he also played um, the Herve Villachez midget character. <laughs> <laughs> Which was my favorite. And, he, and, he, and, and we uh, did a chroma key thing of the background and... and uh, that's Joe Seeley in the background. I'm Bob Hope, and Joe Flaherty's Bing Crosby. Okay. <coughs> oh, this, this is a writing one of yours. session. Oh, that's John uh, as Big Jim McBob <laughs> in on a break, and so that's his hair slicked back, and that's Catherine to his right. There's a closer thing, and that's Catherine to his left. There, it's her. And uh, this is a writing session at a house we rented uh, in Bel Air uh, on Bellagio. <laughs> And that's Flaherty and myself and John and Gene Levy 
uh, writing in the kitchen. Okay, there, <laughs> that's there's your the, dad that's, and Yeah, there's my dad and Greg. <laughs> I rest my case. <laughs> Me, Peter Aykroyd, Dan's brother, and Catherine O'Hara in a stage sketch. This is the Dave Thomas show. Your dad was a guest. He, did come, he always got you me guys are levit You guys are all, both off the ground. We're off the, we're, we're in the air. That's just kidding, a sketch that we did. Uh, it, was a, it was a great sketch, and, and it was a typical sketch for me and John. And it was just back and forth with a doctor telling guys only got six months to live, and then the guy, and then John, the doctor. Don't just, say too much. I'm going to show it to them later. Oh, okay. I'm going to show it to them later. Okay, this was one of my dad's favorite That's photos. Boris and Natasha. <laughs> it's, it's from the movie, but she's not <laughs> Natasha, obviously, and I, I, you know, I was Boris in that. Um, Hold on, I'll go to another close. Look, at, <laughs> look at the eyebrows. That's, look at the eyebrows. That's the John stare. <laughs> and you, we loved it this much that it was on our coffee table in our house. <laughs> and that's my brother. Wait. I can't, oh, there, there it is, there. right on the <laughs> Oh, God, that is so sweet. Oh. That was, I think, maybe the Christmas. And there. Okay, what character was this? Do you remember? I have no idea. <laughs> God. What about, do you know, remember this oh, one? Oh, that's King of the Popes. Oh, it was? <laughs> so these are photos that my mom took. And she kept I think saying, that that's. Me the is Richard Harris? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then Eugene's in the corner. And then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> John's got no hair and I got curly. <laughs> That's SCTV right there. <laughs> oh, okay, so that was the Nutcracker. That's, that's me as Michael Caine in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, could, I could actually do the voice of Michael Caine. <laughs> and, and, and because of the voice, of the big glasses, and the next thing you know, you know, it was, there we were. <laughs> That's <laughs> good John played Orson Welles on that, mm -hmm. and John's take on Orson Welles for this particular sketch was based on the Orson Welles commercial with a radio spot where he goes nuts and it's yeah. for, for peas, <laughs> and uh, the director is giving him a hard time. And so the joke was that the director, John, was trying to do a narrative of Feast of Stephen, and right. he just kept stumbling on it. The line. And then finally he walks off the stage. Grabs the turkey. And on his way by puts his fist inside the turkey and takes the whole turkey away. <laughs> oh, that's back to Michael Caine. More of that, more of Michael Caine, and that's me with the glasses off. Must be on a break. Oh, Texan Edna Boyle. That's something Andrea and Martin and I did together. Which I love. And that's Bob, me as Bob Hope. Which we will go into later, because okay. I love that. And the, <laughs> the McKenzie brothers. Which and when we did the movie, Freddie Fields, who's the president of MGM, says, those faces, don't do those faces. <laughs> <laughs> that's us not doing them. <laughs> okay, that's Doorway to Hell. Yeah. That's, okay. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy to see this. <laughs> okay, as you can see, I don't look even remotely <laughs> What, here's the madness of this sketch. Your dad was the, your dad. So yeah. <laughs> He's all our dad. John was the elevator operator that took us down to hell. I was the host of the show, and Rick was Mr. Wilcox, and his puppet was a murderer. <laughs> <laughs> and we never really knew who was who, you know? <clears throat> oh, there's the, the character that we still don't. You're on the bottom there. Yeah. But we don't know what you're I don't doing. know what I'm getting there made up go. as, though. Okay, and now we're going. That's a stage sketch, <laughs> yep. and I don't remember what that is. But look how young we were. Then. I Just know. <laughs> and then now you're attacking each other. And then typically it erupts into mayhem, you know? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Hey, this. Uh, That's the same thing. Uh, the thing I, might have been the same, same thing. Night. I know that. Okay, so this is Scarborough this? Bluffs. Okay. Okay, this is a sketch John and I did. The premise of the sketch is that the. Americans are invading Canada, and we're watching the border. <laughs> <laughs> so we're two Canadians, <clears throat> and we just did a bunch of jokes about Canada and the U.S. You know, those sort of political sketches. I think, I think there's the, if there's another one there of these. There is a there's Okay, there's the John face on the right. <laughs> John could turn like this on a dime, and the audience loved it. From the happy, jovial guy to, 
<laughs> and that is the turn on the right side <laughs> when he would do that turn. I think I um, a wide shot, yeah. Oh, that's the same thing. Yeah, but we've got the, now you can see that he's got a bow in your. Yeah, yeah, those were our weapons. <coughs> and I don't know what that is. Mm -hmm. I don't, yeah. That, oh, that's funeral. That's what that is. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, um, frankly, yeah. And this? These are photos that my mom took uh, that had the oh, kind wow. of weird psychedelic. <coughs> are those like from the night? Uh, from, are, yeah. Okay. Yeah. They're not like the deterioration of the photo. They no, th not. they've always Actually been like night. this. Oh, God. All right. <laughs> <laughs> when you see yourself looking like that, now nah, go to the mirror. Oh, here. like <laughs> oh here's <laughs> the gum. That, okay, so that's Daryl Sittler, the Weedabix spot with uh, Joe Flaherty and myself as the director. <laughs> we had so much fun in that. And but just the frame, that's Andrea, she's the prompter on the right. Isn't it Andrea? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so you had a bunch of these Well, photos. yeah, but it was good because you had the close-ups and yeah. we had the further up one, like further distance ones. <laughs> it's just, there you, you can cheat, you can cheat not there. You gotta cheat to get it like that. Okay, have you seen these? No, what's this? You guys putting your hands in cement and signing oh, in Toronto? Okay. St. Lawrence? Is it? St. Lawrence Center. Okay. I should have my mom. <laughs> my, mo my mom should be my co-star. <laughs> Co-host. I lost somehow, you know? Okay, I don't remember that either. There you go. <laughs> and I don't remember that guy. That's Sam Frank. Sam, I don't know who that guy is either. Oh, this is Emily and me on a on a camel. <laughs> and then Look at her. I know. And oh, then hold on, I've got hold on. The next one is my brother and Jonathan. Is just a Superman. Oh god. Yeah, he was obsessed with Superman for <laughs> such a long time. And then That's in the Emmys. In the Emmys. Oh, I have this pick. I've got it, so you got it too, Rose, right? Yeah. Oh great. Yeah. This is John and I fighting over the Emmys. <laughs> <laughs> Did you all get one, or did yeah, you have yeah, to? Okay. Got one. We, we, we. <laughs> Just share it every six months. We're, we're comedians. Somebody says, oh, "Let's get a pick for the end." So John and I pose the picture of us fighting. You know, it's, it's our job. You know? So had you seen a lot of those, or do you have no, some? Because you have, you did a whole book yes, of photos. I did, and at that time I had them all kind of gathered together, and then I put them in storage. And I lost a lot of them, or, or they're under a box somewhere. Oh, I know, that's the problem, so, yeah. scanning them all. Well, the good thing that I'm starting with this is I'm actually going through bins and bins at my mom's house of photos that she has taken that we have, and then scanning them. And then yeah. that actually forces me to... Hard work. Well, it takes forever. I know. <laughs> <laughs> See, if only there was scanner. someone who could do it for you. And then, just, but then you have to pay money, and then it's just easier for you to do it. And then it's memories, and then it's, you know, then you go through all that. Then we were talking about storage earlier. <laughs> pay $700 a month to store my old shit. <laughs> <laughs> I rarely go over to visit it, and it's in boxes, so I don't even look at it. We, we have crates. We have crates. Yeah. So... Like 13 crates? Yeah. yeah. I don't know why I have it, really. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> so. But you hold, you still, you hold on to it. It's yeah. nice. It's nice to, and you have where? Okay, so where's the where's the Emmy? Where do you keep that? That's in my office. Oh, there you go. Yeah, and I got another one for Animax for I, animation. Yeah. But. So how? Uh, so how? Okay, is here's the story about that. I want. Yeah. We, I didn't even know we'd won, and I hired mm -hmm. a guy to run the company because I don't really, I'm not a big fan. Of you founded part the company. Owner, part owner of an animation company. <laughs> <laughs> Which I have to tell you though, my favorite iPad game, I realized as I was looking up the, the company, I was like, oh, they created Where's My Water, the Disney, That's the right. game where the alligator in the bathtub, I don't know if you've ever played that game. <laughs> It's my favorite game, and yeah, all of a sudden, that's one of your games. With the Disney company, I, yeah. of course, you don't ever own it. Right? Never <laughs> with Disney. <laughs> but what were we talking about, about animation? We were talking yeah. you, the award, oh, when okay. you didn't even know that you won. No, so Michael, we have a little had a little newsletter for a while for the company, and then I, I just came across it, and I didn't even look at it all the time. And I see like six animators holding their Emmys. I go, what the hell is this? <laughs> and Michael said, oh, we won an Emmy. And I said, what was it for? And he said, it's for the sports show that we did. And I said, you mean the one that Tim Hedrick and I created and wrote? And he goes, yeah. And I said, 
well, where's our ends? And Michael said, well, I didn't think you'd want one. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, are you out of your mind? Get me my damn Emmy. <laughs> so he comes to me a week later and he said, I was able to get one for Tim, but I couldn't get one for you because the, no the tanks, yeah. They said uh, that we've given you too many and they're only allowed to have so many per category. So <laughs> he had one in the in this display case in the lobby. It really bugged me. <laughs> it, it had his uh, name on it? Did it have your did it have your name it on it? It had Animax on it. Oh. So I'm walking by this display case every day, just it's like salt in a wound <laughs> looking at that thing. <laughs> bitches. So <laughs> so one day I walked by it and I just opened the case and took it. <laughs> <laughs> and then Michael says to me, somebody stole our Emmy. And I said, no, I took it. <laughs> and he said, well, you, you got to bring it back. I said, no, you put your Emmy back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, that's hysterical. Jen, thank you for having me on your show. Well, thank you for coming to my show. God. Now we got to talk about your career. My no, yes. no, 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 no. This oh, is yes, this yes, is yes. my career right here. This is Couch Candy. This is Couch it's Candy. A pad it's a launching pad. It's a calling card for your career. My career as an actor. You got to get on uh, Modern Family. That's my <laughs> <laughs> I like that goal. Yeah. That's a good goal. Let's I'm let's do that. I know one of the writers there, and I'm on the Fox lot working on a, a show called Bones, and so I'm I'm, I'm going to start working on that. Okay. <laughs> what about Bones? I can play I'm a dead person. Show. Can I play a dead person? can't be wasted as a dead person. Why not? I thought that would be, that's, okay. kind, that's kind of like a goal that I want to do. It's like be a dead person on one of those shows. Do you want to do draw, draw, or melodrama? Why not? Or do you want to do I'll comedy? Do, I'll do it all. <laughs> I prefer the comedy, but in a pinch, yeah. All right, fine. You, you want to be on Bones? Yeah. All right, I'll talk to them. <laughs> but I want to be someone that dies. I'm a consulting producer. I'll talk to them. No, no, it, they, you don't want to be someone who dies because okay. they come in dead. So oh. it's not like you're going to be talking and then you're going to die. I can they, play they, a good dead person. Dead at the top that actually might take the pressure off of learning lines. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. Well, how's that? How's that audition go? You yeah. just go in and you just lay there. <laughs> So, <laughs> how long have you been writing on Bones? Uh, that's two, two completely different. That's you go from comedy to. As I got older, I got less funny. <laughs> so Hard I to believe. To move to drama, and uh, it's been great. But that know? show has kind of a light. It does, but it has really light comedy that you don't have to be that funny. A dark comedy, as they call it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So I do the kind of lighter, kind of lame jokes that. <laughs> that are on that show, but it's, I, I, no, I write whole episodes. I really do, but it, I love it because it was a different thing to do, and you know, you always need to keep trying different things, or you get really stale. Well, you've been, you've constantly been busy ever since SCTV. You did, you did the new show. You did the Dave Thomas show. Yeah, I've done. I created a game show when I was on Grace Under Fire. I was bored, and, and then Grace, sitting yeah. in my dressing room. <laughs> and I was reading about Merv Griffin and how he created Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune. I thought, oh man, I should do that. <laughs> so I came up with this idea for a game show and went into ABC and sold it as a pilot. And they produced the pilot, but then they didn't pick it up as a series. So then I went to Family Channel and sold it to Family Channel. And we did, while I was doing Grease Under Fire, we did 144 um, episodes of Family Challenge. And it was kind of a cheesy show where, you know, people get slimed a lot. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it was a fun show. And like I've done animation, and I've done sketch, and I've done hours. You've dabbled in everything. Hour. Yeah. I love all. I've done TV movies, too. You're, you're like me. I feel like I wear so many different hats. Like, I wanted to do producing, and then acting, and then I started, I just did one stand-up show, and now I'm but a talk show host. I wouldn't want to be doing <laughs> Talk show host? What, what are you? Well, this is what That's I call. What you should do. Well, I'm tr Modern Family. You should have a show like Ellen. Okay. <laughs> Called Couch Candy. Yeah. <laughs> How did we get something like that going? I have no idea. <laughs> well, we got to think about it. We got to find an audience. Yeah. We got to find. <laughs> Wait a minute. 
I have a feeling this, this is, is happening. happening. Oh wow. <laughs> so creepy. <laughs> <laughs> so creepy when your dreams become reality. I oh did. Ha- I did have. I did have a nightmare last night. You did. I did. The nightmare was that <laughs> nothing. No offense, Jason. None of the sound cues were like it was one of those things where. The sh- there was a show prior, and then I come in, and I'm, they're like, we don't have any of the sound cues. We don't have the videos. We don't have anything. And I was like, oh, it's all on my computer. Couldn't get my computer to work. I didn't have the disk. I didn't have a flash drive. It's like I am so prepared, all, mostly all the time, and detail-oriented that just everything kind of... And then there was an earthquake in the dream. And, <laughs> and I was driving a double-decker bus. This is a whole other topic that we're going to. So Do I don't you even have those dreams, those backstage dreams? I yeah. have those all the time. I was talking to someone at work where I have dreams where I'm doing a play and I, I'm just about to go on stage and I'm asking, does anyone have a script? I need a script. Does anyone have a script? And I get a script. I this dream. And the pages are blank. Yeah. Just to, I just need to like refresh my memory. And I get mad in my dream at the people that won't tell me what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, jerk offs, if you're not going to tell me what to do, I'll just go out there and make it up and it may embarrass you, you know. But it is, I think it's a performer dream. I think a lot yeah. of performers have, have that, that anxiety. I had a horrible writing dream, and it was so vivid. But it was like, I'm in a writing room, and I'm in a, a like a kind of a rattan, bamboo, rickety kind of structure where we're working on scripts. And I look out the window, and there's this giant tsunami coming. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what the hell? And I tell everybody, there's a tsunami coming. And I run out, and this thing just like flattens everything. And then somehow it's back up and going again, and we're all writing again, and it's still coming again in the window. It's like it's on a replay, oh, that's on a, a loop. Horrible nightmare. Yeah. yeah. It's not that funny, but it was a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting a payoff, and I didn't have one. So. Okay. <laughs> I want to play the clip that you were going to start talking sure. about now because we're slowly running out of time. But I want people to see this, and then you can talk. About it. Okay, heads up. There's a weather alert midway in this. No, not midway. Within the first like minute, two of them. So once you hear the beep the second time, you're in the clear. It's not part of the sketch. No, <laughs> but it is really it's funny. It's just one of those things you have to put up with. Come on, Al. Hey, Doc. Sorry, I'm late. Okay. <laughs> I just received the results of your tests. Yeah? Yeah. I'm afraid it's not good news. What do you mean? Hal. You have six months to live. Oh no. I can't believe it. What am I gonna do? Actually, I'm kidding, you're fine. You weren't serious? I'm sorry, I wasn't. I had you going, though, didn't I? I mean, I mean the look on your face, I mean, oh. you, you were white. <laughs> oh, boy, you really had me going. I mean, yeah, you, were, yeah, yeah, you were so yeah. convincing. My heart was... Oh, yeah. <laughs> I do a little amateur theater. Every <laughs> oh, so, really, um, Doc, uh... Tell me now, what about the results of my test? Honestly, God, I don't know uh, what the results of your test are. I haven't checked them out yet. You're probably uh, healthy as a horse. Let me just just, just find out right here. <laughs> oh, what a relief. <clears throat> and there's, there's Crocker? Yeah, could you bring in Mr. Porter's test results, please? Thank, thank you. <laughs> All right, then. Well... Huh? Is, 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 is he, is he going to live? Yes, he's fit as a fiddle. Oh, I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. See, what did I tell you? You huh? told me. I told you. Yeah. I told you. It says it right. Oh, my God. <laughs> what is it? What are you talking about? You said he was fine. Oh, no, no. Come on. I'm not falling for this again. This is twice. His results are terrible. Come on, come he's on. He's a dead man. You tried to pull this on me. Before. I'm not kidding you. I'm not joking. Look at that. See for yourself. I'm disappointed in you. How could you do that? That was tasteless. Come on, Nurse Crockett. Oh, no. What am I going to do? God, I'm sorry, Hal. I don't know what to tell you. I know what to tell him. Tell him I'm just kidding. What? What? <laughs> what? I oh, no. think the results is of this real file. Uh, oh, yeah. Come on. <laughs> you didn't. <laughs> 
Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's priceless. I didn't see why you guys should have all the fun. You that's know. priceless. Yeah. That was great. You I applaud you for that one. That was great. Oh, did she have you? She got me. She got me. Oh, sure. You're fine. Everything's fine here, Hal. <laughs> Hal? Hal! That's not funny. That's not funny. I don't like that. I, I, oh, come oh. on. I already called that, Jack. Can't breathe. No, I can't breathe. No. Can't breathe. No. Oh. You boys are dying. Oh. It's really happening. Oh, no. He's no. no, Norman, don't die, please. Oh. He's dead. What? You. You. You killed him with your dirty, rotten, practical jokes. And I loved him. He was more than just a boss to me. I can't live without him. What? What are you doing? I'm fine, Norman. Oh, my God. Nurse, you're alive. No, I was kidding. Well, you just killed your nurse with oh that joke. Oh, my God. I just out the window. Oh, my God. It's oh. a joke. Just kidding. Oh. You really got us with that one. Boy, oh, you are something. All right, get, get her hand there. All right, let's pull up. One, two, three. Here we go. There they are. They, they killed her. They pushed her out. Hey, you. What are we going to do? I don't know. We got to get out of here. Yeah. Hey, you up there. Get out. What? Just kidding. I can't believe, I can't believe they set us off. <laughs> That's funny. What a couple of jerks I we are. I can't believe huh? we bought it. Oh. Boy, I, I don't feel as stupid as you, though. Why? Well, I didn't do the whole scene with that stuff on my jacket. What's that? Oh. I'm kidding. <laughs> too far and then keeping it going as far as you can and that's i think that has the flavor of what we would do on stage a lot you know we would do those things where we take, take it further and further and further and it gets it, there's a point where it's like not that funny and then because through, through the sheer repetition it starts to become funny again you know anyway, that's, that's what i think which i love so we actually what? have to wrap it up oh no i know <laughs> Okay, let's drive out. Okay. <laughs> Put your seatbelt on. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. There we go. I hope you're safe driving. I know. And get out! <laughs> <laughs> let's leave. Okay. Thank you guys so much for coming. <laughs> <laughs>